awareness, consciousness left far behind. Savatha was not Savatha in this state. Stars and space drifted through a distantly throbbing head until they lost all semblance of knowing who they were or what they'd done. It was simply the deep, deep black of space and a trembling, blinking light of a distant star. The star reached for Savatha, and they were engulfed by it. But not just by light, and the life Savatha felt from the crew. The light twisted around them, and Savatha opened their eyes to the amber glow of the Kraken's sight. Its large eye regarded Savatha with a blank detachment. And yet, they reached towards one another, but the pull was to nothingness. To death, the gulf of time and space and the rending of life itself. She awoke, first in a haze of struggling blinks, blurry colors before slitted eyes. Then, deep darkness again. And she heard voices, pleading and reassuring. A palm on her forehead. She smelt the salt of tears. Warmth spread through cold, unresponsive limbs, waking her up. A splitting headache widened the gulf between Savafa's temples. But Savafa was alive. She finally stirred to the sounds of her familiar ship. The whir of machines, footsteps echoing down a long corridor. Her arms and legs leaden. Savafa tried to rise. Welcome back, Soren. His voice was strained, as though he had been shouting. Savafa couldn't see him clearly in the dimness of the recovery pod, but she noticed his shoulders seemed straighter. He sat upright. Uh, report, Savafa croaked. Soren winced, practically hysterics for the usually grim Soren. Savafa squinted and swung her legs around the rest pod, bare feet slapping down on the cold tile. The news wouldn't be good, but the great hunt had to continue, and she had to lead. <sighs> That's an order. Soren stalled. So, it wasn't good news. Before Savafa could rebuke him, the pod door hissed open, and Halvar's bulking frame ducked into the small quarters. He grinned through a split lip, cheeks and nose red. You're awake! He stooped and wrapped Savafa into a crushing hug. Savafa's head stopped throbbing, at least. When Halvar finally let her go, she bent her neck from side to side with a satisfying pop of vertebrae. Halvar, report, Savafa said, sparing Thorn an impatient sideways glance. What the black hole happened? Halvar's sunny expression clouded over immediately. He looked down, hands folded before him, and sniffed. Are you drunk? Thorn asked. Halvar's chin shot back up. Well, I can't think of a better time to drink than a toast to those we've lost, can you? Savafa reached for their uniform and stood. Her headache was little more than a dull drumbeat now, but her legs felt brittle still. That didn't matter. She had a crew to lead. Her fingers fumbled over the fabric, biting a harsh admonishment from uh, Soren and Halvar's bickering, and continued lack of reports. Soren stood, and the man looked better. Tired, yes. His posture was less bent, however, and the flesh of his face smoother, less haggard. He had earned the crew's respect, but how? She grasped glimpses in her own memory of the chaos, the smooth movements of the impossible foe. Nothing more. She had failed her crew and lived still in their love for her. Because of it. Report! Savafa barked. What is the state of my crew? Halvor and Sorn tripped over one another's words to share the details of what had happened. A valiant effort from all parties, including Sorn, who Halvard begrudgingly admitted was the sole reason for her survival. Halvar battled valiantly as well, according to Sorn, swinging his hammer despite suffering a gash that would fell a lesser man. As they spoke and reported the three lost souls to the ghost, Safafa felt a sinking weight bring her down to her bunk. Both men glanced at one another, united in their concern for her. It's, it's not all lost, Soren said gently. We are anchored for repair, but we managed to capture the ghost ship. 
waiting on orders to search or destroy. Granted for search, Savapa said. I'd like to see the injured. You're still injured yourself. You should rest. I should have a crew that listens to their superior's orders. Savava snapped back, and the center of her forehead split with pain. She sighed and pressed the heels of her hands to her closed lips. Halvar scratched the back of his head. It's not all bad news. Oh, tell me how a day wasted from our aim and three dead crew could possibly yield good news. The Kraken could be lost completely by now. Halvar's face split into a wide grin. Because we captured the ghost. Hmm, not killed, even though she was sure that's what the ghost deserved. Captured. She still had a chance for revenge. Savafa matched Halvar's grin, knuckles popping as she clenched her fists against her thighs. Show me, 